We established the Scholars Program in Culture and Communication about five years ago um, as a means to invigorate conversation about all things related to culture and communication. So we have a number of programming options uh, where we uh, bring in um, guest lectures, we uh, host colloquia, we have one-day symposia, and we have visiting scholars, all of whom are here to uh, bring to our, the forefront of our attention um, issues that are connected to culture and communication both here and around the world. My main research topic is Cuban commercial television from 1950 to 1960. You know, everybody assumes that television, commercial television ended with the revolution, the Cuban revolution in 1959. But no, it extended a little longer because Fidel Castro didn't declare Cuba a socialist country until 1961. People, when, talk, when they talk about Cuba, they talk about literature, they talk about history, they talk about the economy, uh, they talk about film because Cuba became a huge film center in 1959, okay? But they never talk about television. And I, I'm saying, well, you know, something, I think in order to, under, in order to understand the, the power of the Cuban revolution, you have to go back and study television, you know, how he used that medium extensively. We've never had anybody on the faculty who does Latin American studies, at least not uh, during the lifespan of the program. So we were hoping that she would bring a geographic focus. By contrast, Rich's interest uh, in the history of sound communication really kind of spins us temporally backward. And the argument there was that we really have not had somebody doing sound in the school for very many years. I wrote a book called How Early America Sounded, um, which starts out uh, uh, uncovering a world in the 17th and 18th century where sound was important in ways that it perhaps is no longer to us. When I worked on that, uh, there were two parts to the questions I was asking. The first part is, what was this earlier world like uh, where sound was important in different ways than it is today? Uh, and the second was, how do we get from there to the very visually uh, dominated world that we live in today. So what I'm doing, uh, both in the talks and in the books, is staging a conversation between this earlier shift and some of the shifts that may be underway today uh, with the, the rise of the internet uh, and some of the talk about that being a revolutionary new medium. Whether it is the ways in which reality television takes shape, whether it's how uh, journalism um, connects with uh, online forms, uh, whether it's the ways in which space is actually structured in different places around the globe. The important thing I think that we've been trying to do, and I think we've been succeeding in doing, is taking what we think we know and kind of shaking it up. And once we land with that new knowledge, um, somehow what we began with looks different. I think that both the scholars' uh, lectures um, and the scholars' classes, um, the summer culture, um, the various and sundry other colloquia that we do all have that kind of impulse at heart. And my hope is that we'll be able to continue um, acting on that impulse for more years to come.